How's it going everybody? Just thought I'd run out and uh, spend a little time in the saw shop. I'm still painting the house. I'll show you guys my progress maybe in the next video if you guys are interested. Um, just thought I'd run out today and uh, hang out with you guys for a little bit. Need a little shop time today. Weather's been horrible. It's cold. I got lots of yard work to do. Machinery to pull out. Got to pull out the mower and do some servicing to that. We'll do that probably maybe this weekend. See what the weather's like. But uh, in the meantime, I'm tying up loose ends. Um, still uh, just buttoning up Adam Winchittle's saw. I want to get that in the mail and mail it away to him. Uh, 922, same thing. I'm going to pull that up, uh, pull the bar and chain off that, clean it, make sure everything's good to go. I'm going to replace the fuel cap on that because it's leaking when you tilt it forward. It's a duck bill issue. I got lots of home light caps, so I'm... Uh, I'll find one that's good and, and send the saw away. The 850 is coming back. That is correct, friends. That 850 I built for Buck and did blow up. Um, we'll see what it is. I'm an honest fellow. If I made a mistake, I'm going to show you guys on video. Um, if it was a, a heat issue or a running issue, we'll figure that out. Um, so I'm excited. That should be here next week. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll get back into that. Few loose ends to finish up, friends. The uh, 03 Magnum. I want to get the wheel back on that. See where we left off and grind that up and see how it runs. If it doesn't run good, we'll uh, we'll we'll do some more work to that. I'm probably going to put seals in that. The bearings and bottom end look good. Uh, we'll do a nice. Um, I'm going to call it a a shorter a shorter bar high speed port job on that. I think. Um, I know who owns that, and I know what kind of wood they cut, so I'm going to build him a saw that I think he'll enjoy. Something that'll cut a little bit faster than what he's running. Okay, in the meantime, I put a new bench top on the workbench. It's white. It should show up better. Um, hopefully this works good for you guys. It's metal. No more goopy wood bench top. So I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm still reconfiguring my shop, friends. Um... This might be the new backdrop for a while. I'm going to I'm gonna tidy it up back there and stuff like that. But I'm just puttering a little at a time. Got a baby coming, painting, yard work. I uh, got a tree to plant. Just all kinds of good things. So um, just figured I'd jump in here today. I got the 394 XP cases on the bench. Um, this is going to be a long-term project. I'm probably just going to make this into something silly. Um... And, and go from there. I have no need for another 394 stock. Uh, I got one up there on the bench. She's a really nice running saw. Pulls a long bar well. And it's like brand new inside. I'll never port that saw. But this one on the other hand. This one's kind of ugly. You guys have seen this. Um, we broke down the cases. I believe on video. And uh, I haven't really been back into it. I've been getting lots of questions on bottom ends, friends. Uh, the dreaded bottom end. Uh, I get emails all the time. Uh, a fella emailed me two, three days ago. What was his name? I believe it was John. And he said, Tin Man, once I split the case with my case splitter. Now remember, friends, you need one of these. If you're not, if you're going to do bottom ends, you should buy one of these. Um, this one has a million miles on it and it still works. This pushes... The end of the crankshaft through the bearings. It holds the bearing on this side and pushes the crankshaft out of the bearing. Um, but I get emails all the time. What do I do after I get the crankshaft out? The bearings are still stuck in there. What do I do? So I'm going to bring you guys in close and let's do this in real time. I'm going to show you everything you need to finish the job. And let's push these bearings out and I'll show you guys how I do it. There's other ways to do it. Um... I always say, I don't know everything, friends. I do things the way I do them. Other people do things the way they do them. I'm good with that. Um, this is just an easy way to remove bearings without struggling, without fancy tools. The only special tool you need to do bottom ends is one of these. If you don't have one or you have a saw with crank stuffers, you can heat the case, drop the whole assembly out. But the problem with that is then the bearings are stuck on the crank. Um... I've had very success heating the bearings and trying to pop them off. Sometimes you got to crack them off. Uh, a bearing puller works well. 
So this is just the way I do it. This covers old saws up until we get into the auto-tune area. Most of those saws have plastic races and crank stuffers. So let's do it on a good old, what year is this thing? 1993 394 XP. Okay friends, so where you want to start, or at least where I start, is I want to get these crank seals out of here. Now I tried to refund these with seal puller and it, it just, it's not working. So another way you can do that, take a screwdriver, you'll feel it catch. Now the nice thing is this is resting against the race. Okay. There you go. Drove it out from the inside out. Now, when you're pulling seals out, make sure you don't scratch that inside surface, okay, or it's gonna leak. Okay, friends, so here's our cases. If you're gonna do a bottom end on a saw, make sure the cases are in good shape. Um, these ones, this one's broken down here. Uh, shouldn't really affect anything. Other than that, I mean, it's a logging saw, right? Remember the inside of this thing, friends? I still haven't 100% cleaned these things out. Whatever is in there is almost like a silicone type substance. It's horrible. Uh, I actually took this thing to the car wash the other day and sprayed it out. <laughs> Car washes are, are marvelous things. If you have a saw that's just gross, take the parts with you, put them in a milk crate even, and just hose the, the crud right off of it at the car wash. That's a good way to start your cleaning. Now, these bearings now, because I washed this out with water, are completely locked up. Uh, they were very seized. Okay, so how do we get these bearings out of here? Well, let's... Now, friends, I want to do this in real time. So, here, and I'll show you guys with the temp gun what we're dealing with, okay? 60 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature. If you don't have a heat gun, okay, you can use a torch. I don't like using a torch. I find it's a little hot um, to each their own, okay? Let's get that pocket nice and warm. Okay. Most of the meat is here, so I will literally just go around and start getting this hot. This one has replaceable tips. Uh, it directs the heat in, in a smaller area. Okay, and we'll check it with the temp gun as we're going. Here, so how hot is it now after 110 was max? The idea is these are magnesium, okay, these cases. You don't want to drive it out of there unless you have to. You don't want to drive out a, a bearing because these are a pressed fit. You could scratch the case. You could enlarge the pocket where the bearing sits, and you could end up ruining your case. If this bearing spins in the case, the case is no good. 233 degrees I saw. Okay, make sure you have a rag or, or something. Okay, now let's do this side. Now friends, I don't know if you guys can see, do you see the smoke coming off the cases? That's usually when they're hot enough. You get smoke coming off of there, they're usually good to go. You can smell it, the oils and, and sawdust coming off the case. Okay, these are smoking good. What do we got here? 250, 249. 250 is about the temperature where I'm happy. Okay, one more time, flip this over. And I'm going to do both sides in real time. I want you guys to see this so we 
You see how long it takes? I remember when I first started doing this, um, I wasn't sure. Like, was I gonna get it too hot? Was I gonna wreck something? Pretty hard to wreck this stuff, friends. Take your time. If this bearing doesn't fall out, okay, then it's not hot enough. Ready? 285. Now watch this, friends. I'm gonna turn my heat gun off here. Okay, 285. See that? The bearing's not moving. This thing wants a little more heat. Let's give it more heat. Just gently tapping it, okay? This is the sure way to not wreck it. Now I could drive that out at this point. I've done bazillions of these. I know it's hot enough, but why wreck it, right? 394 cases aren't exactly easy to come by. Okay, let's keep going. I want to make this saw really silly, friends, just because. 300 degrees. Notice that bearing's starting to turn blue. Okay, you can tell it's getting hot. Okay, let's flip this back over and I bet you it'll pop right out now. Hey, friends, ready? Okay, now I was not hitting that hard. Okay, there's your bearing. I'm gonna throw the bearing on the ground because that's the safest place for it. Now, look inside that bearing pocket. Notice there's no scratches going in and out. That's why, see that friends? There's no scratches going in and out. You see circles in there, but no scratches. Those are milling marks, okay, from the machine work. But notice there's no scratches going this way. Okay, so there's one case done. Let's do the other side. Okay, same thing. Again, what are these? These are 60 degrees, 70. I run my heat gun on high. Uh, this is a newer heat gun. I used to run that old Black & Decker one. I put a million miles on that. But it was time. That thing was starting to not be happy with life. <laughs> the best way to get good deals on saws are to buy ones that are blown up on the bottom end. Because most guys don't want to do this kind of work. This is how I started my saw collecting or, you know, adding better saws to my fleet. I was buying saws that need bearings. Okay. I just figured I'd do this in real time. I don't know if I've ever done one, you know, in 100% real time without, you know, any editing. So let's just do this. I could, I'm starting to smell the cases. You guys that do this probably know what I'm saying. You can smell the oils burning out of the case. Okay, and all I'm doing that's a seal puller if you want to make one. All I'm doing is heating up this sleeve here. And as the sleeve expands, it'll loosen its grip on this bearing. That's why these bearings don't spin in the case. They're not retained. Uh, you see some old saws like home lights that have bearing retainer uh, screws. These don't have that. This is a, this is a press fit, an interference fit. So, like I said, you could drive these out and maybe it'll be okay. But if you're building horsepower, you want this bearing stuck in there or you'll end up spinning a bearing and then you need a new case. So, I love 394s. Uh, they don't come up for sale around here very often. And uh, so I'm super excited to work on this thing. Okay, temp. We're at 300 and change. Let's take this one a little farther and see. Last one had a little bit of tension on it, not too bad. 
Now you're trying not to get the bearing too hot. You want to get the case hotter than the bearing. Okay. Again, you want to work fairly quick. 330 degrees. Ready? So there you go, friends. That one came out way easier. 300 plus degrees. Okay, and there's no scratches going in and out. This bearing is completely roached. Once these cool down, I'll spin them in my fingers and you guys can see what a toast bearing looks and sounds like. These are 6203 C3 grade. Okay, these bearings have cooled down enough. They're still warm. Okay, but listen. You hear that, friends? Now, as you turn it, clunk, clunk, clunk. You can feel crunchy spots. Okay, that's a bad bearing. There is no up and down movement in this bearing. A little bit of... A little bit of... Uh, I think they call that axial slop is fine. Okay, there's no slop in this bearing. But it it's clicky, okay? And again, listen... Okay, if this saw was still running, if you ran this saw, you would hear. Okay, I'm going to go grab a brand new bearing and you can compare. Okay, this is a brand new SKF bearing and there's no oil in it, okay? Because if you oil them, they will quiet down a little bit. Listen. See the difference, friends? It's going, going. Okay, again, no slop. <laughs> okay, now just for fun, just a little Opti 2, okay? A little two stroke oil in both bearings, okay, listen. See how they smoothed out? This one's really bad. What is a little bit of oil? That's why sometimes it can be hard. It can be hard to diagnose a bad bearing. Now this one's oiled. It doesn't spin for as long, but it is like glass. Look at that. Okay, this one. Click, click, click as I spin it around. This one, this one's not as bad. This is the PTO side where the clutch is. This is generally the one that's going to blow up. Okay. Now this saw would keep running. The next stage from this is you start to get play up and down. Play up and down will mean your crankshaft moves up and down and starts to wear your seal. And then usually, if you're lucky, your seal will we'll, uh, let go again because there's just a spring in here these are hard as a rock these seals needed to go there's a spring in here that holds seal tension on the crank now what will happen is the crank will start moving up and down and it'll it'll wear the seal out and then usually you have a saw that doesn't run properly it won't tune it won't idle properly and you take it out of service or the other failure and I've had this and I've seen it a bazillion times is either the guy tunes around the air leak or doesn't hear the air leak or the bearing just completely lets go and what will end up happening friends is this cage this is a metal cage these usually don't let go when they do it's really bad if the newer plastic cage saws this cage will let go and it'll go through the transfers usually and it'll take out the bottom and the top end these do let go, but it takes a lot more wear. When they do, it's over. Game over. You'll have shrapnel going through your whole saw. So there you guys go. Um, you can use map gas torch, propane torch, heat gun. Um, you can make your own seal puller. I just, old broken screwdrivers, I grind. Right? And you just go in there and...
You can use screws. If you can't get the screw to start, drill a little hole in there. But remember, you don't want the screw to be wider than the seal, friends, okay? Because you don't want to run the screw into the case. Okay, friends, so I hope that answered all the questions I got. How do you get the bearings out? And friends, no question is too silly to ask. Uh, we all weren't born working on power saws. I certainly was not. Uh, I picked up power saw work later on in life, but uh, I asked a lot of these questions, friends. Um, now I just take it for granted, but it's like, if you don't know, please ask, because it's better to ask and learn something than, than to not ask, because you're, you know, you're, you're, you think it's a silly question. So that's how you do it, friends. Uh, putting the bearings back in is the inverse of that. I like these saws because they are shouldered meaning the bearing can only go in so far. So these are really easy to put back together. Some saws, some saws the bearing fits against the oil pump and you gotta use the oil pump as a stop. Those can be a little more tricky. But again, if you heat the case back up to 300 plus, 350, 325, you can take this and literally drop it back in there. If you put this in the freezer and heat this case up slightly, you literally can just go plunk, put the bearing in, and let it uh, and uh, and let it cool down, and then it ain't coming out of there. So when we build this saw, I'll show you guys. I like to put my bearings on the crank, and then I put the crank and bearing in one case half. Put my gasket in there, and then I put the other case half on, and good to go. Uh, you can pull the crank through the bearings. Uh, there's all kinds of tools and kits out there. I haven't used any of those kits. I have used Husqvarna crank pullers that pull. The crank through the bearing they work great um if you want to use those or you're more comfy with them um that works too i just use heat and a mallet anyhow friends that's what i was doing today just thought i'd pop in here uh hope this new white bench top uh suits us a little bit better maybe a little bit uh a little bit better view and uh onward and upward i'm just having fun and trying to come out here every day friends and do something and uh, we'll get our current projects wrapped up. And we're going to start all kinds of new stuff. I really want to get into the farmer tech. So we're going to get into that right away. And we'll build that saw probably over a week. And I'll tell you guys what I think of it after it's together. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later.